Let's talk about some things about high altitude environments that are bad for exercise performance or maybe uh, just dangerous for your body or for your health, um, other than just the fact that you can't get as much oxygen floating around your bloodstream as you would like. Um, so first one here is that the air temperature at altitude tends to be colder. For every uh, 150 meters that you go up, you're going to expect about a 1 degree Celsius decrease in the air temperature. This increases the likelihood of cold injuries, things like frostbites, uh, hypothermia, those sorts of things. Um, also, as you're going up um, and that air is getting colder, the, the cold air can hold less moisture. So if you look over here at this figure, we have uh, temperatures on the x-axis, so going up in this direction, but if we go in the other direction going down, and then we have water vapor on the y-axis. So 100% uh, humidity means the air is holding as much water as it can. 50% humidity, this orange line, is the air is holding half as much water as it can. So, but let's just look at the 100% humidity line. So at say 30 degrees Celsius, that is going to give you about 30 grams of water per kilogram of air. If you drop that in half to about 15 degrees Celsius, now you're down to about 10 grams of water. So dramatically less amounts of water per uh, unit of air whenever the air gets colder. Uh, what's the problem with this? This cold, dry air at altitude is going to increase the risk of dehydration. You're going to have more water um, being essentially sucked out of your skin by the dry environment around you, and your respiratory fluid losses are going to be greater because you're breathing out humid air, but you're breathing in dry air. So you're going to be losing that fluid, that water in that process. Another thing that's going to happen at altitude is you're going to have an increase in your solar radiation um, due to the elevated altitude. Um, this means sunburns, that sort of things are going to be more likely. So increased UV rays uh, hitting your skin because you have less atmosphere above your head that's going to absorb some of that UV light. Um, also, lower humidity for all the things I've mentioned up here, all the reasons I mentioned up here about the lower temperature. Um, that is going to also affect the amount of solar radiation that reaches you because water vapor, which is what humidity is, is one of the things that helps to absorb solar radiation um, and stop it from reaching your body and your skin, causing that damage from the sun on your skin. And another thing, most high altitude environments, if you go high enough at least, you think like tops of mountains, they're going to have snow on the ground. Snow is white, it's reflective, so not only is the UV radiation coming down at you, now it's going up at you as well from the reflected uh, UV light from the snow underneath of you. So it increases the amount of UV radiation that's going to be hitting your skin. I'm sure there's plenty of other things that are going to negatively affect your body because of the unique environment of high altitude. This was a short list of some major ones. Again, the big one though being the fact that the oxygen partial pressure is lower, but we talked about that a lot in other videos, so we focus on these ones here.